Okay, so this is going to be a video uh, to show you how to upload to a PLC, um, which is basically the download section, and also how to test using the monitor mode. So what we have open is just the current project we've been working with, with the particular coursework, which for me is Assessment 2 FD CW2 for coursework number 2. Uh, from the previous video and from what we've done earlier on, you should see that we have our four FCs highlighted. We've got FC 1, 2, 3 and 4 corresponding to the four different sections of uh, the coursework task that we're asked to do and obviously still the main, the OB1 organizational block 1 is still there uh, which we'll be calling individually one of the four FCs uh, for individual testing purposes. So what I've set up so far uh, inside the main OB is a call feature for FC1. To make a call feature all you need to do within main OB1 is highlight and select the one you want to use to test drag and drop it into the space and it creates a function for you automatically. Okay, so that is main OB. Inside the traffic lights, now this is obviously not the final answer or not anywhere close to it, but just for testing purposes what I have is a PLC set up to the side of me here. Um, I have just a standard input which is normally open, I've got a, obviously a very standard output which is Q0.0 .0 and the input I0.0. Um, you see they've shown up as tag 1 and tag 2 currently showing that I don't really have any PLC tags as such set up within my allocation list. Uh, so what we're going to do is run through the download procedure here and then show you how um, the software is able to monitor and basically show you live what's happening. And what I have is a couple of extra cables here that are just going to simulate uh, the input becoming active. So we're going to say that this is your finished program and you're looking to now test it. To test what you need to do is go over to the left hand side and left click just once on the embolden section of assessment 2 uh, you can go over and you can hit compile which is just below window in my current um, setup and you should hopefully see that you have zero errors and zero warnings for all of the aspects that you're about to download uh, from there you should be able to hit the download to device now I want to make sure that the video shows you all sections of it so what I need to show you first of all is when you hit download for the first time, um, the mine is going to skip a particular screen here. You see in a wee second. So what we see on the screen now is the extended download to device screen. Uh, this is the one I was hoping would come up. Uh, it depends if you've connected to the PLC before. Uh, while you've had the project open or not, depending if this screen comes up or not. But when you first download to a PLC, this is the screen you should see. Um, what you need to select then is the top options here you see from the drop down menu. It's depending on what type of equipment hardware you're connecting with. So in my case it's a desktop. Um, you know, I don't have built in Wi-Fi, there's no extra Wii features with it. So I've, I've only got two options. There's a PNIE, which is the Profinet for slash industrial ethernet which is your, your green um, cable from Siemens. The other one's called a tele service. So the one we want is the PNIE. Um, from that, you will then be given extra options about how you're going to connect via that particular PNIE. So once you've decided over what medium you're going to connect, you then need to select exactly what port you're using within your, your PLC. Now, again, this will depend whether you're on the laptop depending on what version of laptop you're on obviously as well if you're using your own one by using the student version of Siemens or you're on the desktop like myself I've only got two options here I think use on the laptops I have will have up to four different options if I'm right um, the one we want is the Realtek PCIe the GBE family controller basically that's just the brand name of the type of Ethernet card that is inside my, um, my desktop at the minute I think yours is exactly the same brand and name as well um, you've also got the PLC SIM. If we wanted to connect via the PLC SIM, this is how we'd go about doing it. But for this, we want to, to connect to the actual uh, PLC itself. So make sure you have the two options um, selected here. And then what you should be able to do is hit start search. Um, it takes a wee second for this to actually happen. And you can see some of the, uh, the elements coming up here. Um, So once we have the PLC outlined, the particular one, uh, it should find the PLC via the cable as long as you always ha obviously have it connected to your, your laptop or desktop and to the PLC and powered up obviously. Um, you can, we've run through the start search options, it's come up with the one PLC it found basically at the end of the cable. And then what we should be able to do is hit load. Now 
depending if this is your first time connecting to it or a second or third time, you get different messages coming up here. So um, this one here, because I changed between PLCs, to hopefully try to force this to come up, um, it asks that you assign an IP address. This is just via the, the particular desktop or laptop that you're on. Just hit yes in this particular instance, obviously to assign it with an IP address. Uh, take a few seconds to load uh, and finally tell you that it was added and it will tell you what the IP address was, uh, which we're not overly too concerned about. Um, it then go into another window, which is a load preview window. Um, basically anything on here, and it will depend how many different things you're downloading and exactly what it is you're doing via this particular download. But anything that has a warning symbol on the left hand side or a drop down action here, you need to change it so it all goes to a blue tick. Now, most times it will just be changing this one to a stop all. Uh, the basic premise behind this is the modules are stopped for downloading the device. Basically, the PLC needs to go into a stop feature or function before you download so that it doesn't crash or do anything wrong with the, the internals as such of the program. Um, obviously, select stop all and then you're able to hit load. It will then load the configuration. It says it will take some time, obviously dependent on your type of processor within your particular machine. And then finally, um, again, depends on your project. This might be ticked, it may not be ticked. Um, you should tick it because what this allows you to do is to get the software to reboot your PLC basically when it's finished downloading. Similar to when you install software on a machine, quite often when it finishes installing, it asks you to reboot your machine so it's completely finished and ready to run. Same thing needs to happen within a PLC that uh, as soon as you download a new program to it, it wants to reboot. If you tick this option, it will do the reboot automatically for you. Otherwise, you're going to need to walk over to your PLC, turn it off and back on again. Uh, so we'll be ticking this, it saves you the effort. Hit finish and it will then try to download. Um, you should hopefully see down near the bottom here, uh, you've got zero errors and zero warnings. Hopefully everything was successful in this particular instance. And what we're able to do now, I'll just remove some of these elements out of the way. So we're now looking at FC1. So this is the particular function that I've decided to load. Um, I've done a very simple uh, inline one input and basically. So this input one or I0.0 .0, uh, when activated will turn on Q0.0. .0. So what we're able to do is not only test that it's actually downloaded, but we're actually able to test and see it live running. So what we need to do is if you go up to the option here, so within FC1 itself, there's a monitor on or off mode. If you click the monitor mode here, and again, it will take a few seconds for it to load, you'll see the banner turns orange at the top. Uh, that's the indication from Siemens that you're currently online, you're live with the particular system. And then anywhere where the green icon here on the left, where it turns green, shows you basically, if you want to think about it, where the voltage is such as that. Um, obviously, we're not working with voltages here. It's, it's obviously within a program, but it's an easy way to think about it if that's how you, you, you work. So if we activate I0.0, .0, I have a wee cable here to help short out. So all I'm going to do is put a 24 volt straight into input 0.0. .0. And you can see then, as soon as I've put the cable into it, you see that it recognizes I0.0 has become active and it's turned on Q0.0. And although you obviously can't see it in the video, I can witness on the PLC itself that I've seen Q0.0 turning on. So again, that's monitor mode. Just to get back off that when you're finished, you can click on the wee glasses symbol, which is monitor on and off. And again, could be a small second delay. And then everything goes down to the, the dark blue or the black uh, font again as such that uh, you're now offline. You can go online and offline at the top up here as well. And you can also test individual programs, or you can test multiple programs at the same time if you are if you have them called via OB1. Currently, the only one we have is, if we have a wee quick look, we can nip back out, go to our project tree. If we open up main OB1, you see the only one we currently have called is FC1. So despite the fact that we have FC2, 4 and 3 created, but although they're empty right now, none of them are actually running inside the PLC because they're not told to be active. So only the ones that are called within OB1, organizational block 1, 
will actually become active and run. So we only really want to test one FC at a time uh, for what we're doing for the purposes of the coursework. Um, so that is the method of how to set that up. So folks, um, that's sort of the end. So what we've shown you here is how to finish off the last bits of programming. Obviously, I've just shown you a very basic, simple program here. I've showed you how to compile, how to download the options to go through, and finally find your PLC. Um, and then finally, we showed you how to go online with the monitor mode, which then displays everything in real time, basically live, and even has sort of graphical output showing you what turns, turns on and off, which is a very handy way to test your programs uh, to see if they're working or not. Okay, thanks very much.